Amen. Good morning. Good to see all of you here today. We are starting a brand new uh, series here today, and it's exciting. And one of the reasons why it's exciting is we can see God's Word unfolding before our very eyes. And so as we see the unfolding of God's Word, we know that God's Word is true. And so how many of you know we live in crazy times? We are a nation. We were a nation set up on the foundations of the Lord. And so we've had foundations and different things that you can look around in our society, in God we trust, on our coins. We could see the different foundations, how our legal system was founded upon uh, the Old Testament law. And some of those things in our nation that was set as a standard for us, and I believe you and I can see how there's been a slow change in our world. Would you agree with that? And that slow change is picking up in a faster, faster pace. Why is that? How is that? How could the very foundations that we had for the nation be able to change? And I'm going to talk to you about this in, in this series that I'm talking to you about. And um, I'm glad you're here today because today is just a foundation of where this is coming from next week. If you don't come to any other service this year, come to next week. Uh, I'm going to show you in detail some specific things, show you some videos and some pictures of what is taking place in our world today that will blow your mind. And so as we see back in the Old Testament, God set up a standard, and he set up the Ten Commandments, and one of the first things he says is what? Have no other gods before me. Have no other gods before me. And so I want to talk about that today because I believe there is a return of the gods that we see in the Old Testament who has made its way back in Western civilization. And it's mind-boggling, and that's how and why these changes are taking place. And I'm going to talk about, towards the end of today, why that was able to take place. And so we see that, is it possible that we read in the Old Testament these ancient gods that are affecting us right now? Why our culture, our children, our government are being transformed in radical ways in our world today? Isn't it mind-boggling what we used to teach our kids in schools in the 50s and 60s and what they're teaching our kids today? Isn't it mind-boggling? I'm getting that glazed donut look. How many of you know what's taking place in our schools today? the indoctrination of our children to go a certain way. How could that be? Well, there's been change in our world, in the foundations that are set even in our government. And so they're taking place in radical ways. And I want to talk to you in this series what you need to know in light of it. Uh, there is a book that I highly recommend. Um, it, it's uh, by Jonathan Kahn, The Return of the God. So if this interests you, he has a lot of material in there. Uh, I think it's like a 500-page book. It's really good. But it really shows what is taking place in our world today. So again, I'm giving you a foundation uh, today, and then I'm going to show you some specific things uh, next week that is popping up all over uh, our world today and even here in the United States, um, different things that are popping up that will blow your mind. We see in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses is saying that the people were departing from God. Now this is all the way through the Old Testament. The people were turning away from God and they were turning to other gods. So instead of worshiping God, they worshiped idols, other gods. Now look at the very first verse on your outline with me in Deuteronomy 32, 17. Now let me preface this. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. And so this translation that I'm going to give to you here um, is from the Hebrew Bible in Deuteronomy 32, 17. It says this, They sacrificed unto Shadim, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. 
So they sacrificed to Shadim. If you were to look up the definition of Shadim, and there's a couple different uh, uh, definitions, it would be a, a malevolent spirit uh, that would lay waste and devastate and bring destruction. In other words, it, it was a, a, an evil spirit that would uh, wish ill of you. It would bring devastation and destruction uh, to you. And so that's why God was saying, uh, have no other gods before me, because it was these gods that would cause the nation to lay waste. It would bring devastation and destruction to the nation. And behind it was something that was wishing ill. And so in the, in, um, the Hebrew text, we see that the Jews translated it, the Jewish scholars translated the Hebrew into Greek. So when they did that, they had to look for a definition of Shadim. Bless you. And we're going to see that in Deuteronomy 32, 17. And here, the word is, is changed into Greek. And it says this. They sacrificed unto, say that word fast three times, demonios, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. So we see in the translation, what is interesting is that word there, uh, demonios, is the translation that we get for demons. For demons. So that is very interesting as we see this, that they're demonic entities, and while we see angelic entities are by nature uh, joined to worship God, we see that these demonic um, spirits, these demonic beings... Uh, would be at war with the worship of God. Even if they used through the means of the form of these other gods. Are you with me? So behind these gods that they were worshiping in the Old Testament, behind those gods were demonic spirits. And what they tried to do by nature to be at war with the worship of God, they would try to draw people away from the worship of God. That's what they were designed to do. And I'm going to name the, the specific gods uh, next week. And um, it's, it's interesting, the same spirits are here in our world today. They're just uh, kind of a little bit more modern. But the same spirit is behind them that we'll see and we'll, we'll name names. And so we see here, what is so interesting is that behind these other gods were these demonic spirits, and the purpose was this, and the same purpose today, is to draw people away from worshiping God and worship other things. The same word is used here in Psalm 106, 36, and 37. It says, and they served their idols which were a snare unto them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demonios. So here we see that they sacrificed, they served other idols, and it was a snare to them, and they even sacrificed their children to demons. Hmm. And then look with me, the same word is used here in 1 Corinthians 10.20. He says this, Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. Wow. So we don't kind of identify those things in our world today, do we? That kind of behind those evil things... Are, are actually spirits. They're demonic spirits. So the same thing that was taking place in the Old Testament we've seen has crept into our nation. Now, I believe we have been a godly nation. Would you agree with that? Would you agree we have been founded on the principles of God? And how many of you know we have slowly drifted away from those principles? And now they're, they're no longer heeded. And so I believe this is a warning to us, and I think this will help us, because as the world gets more and more evil, we will, 
we will know why it's getting uh, eviler, if you will, in our uh, present world. Because there are certain things behind it, and there's a cause of why this has happened that I'll address. And so we see that the mystery of the gods is simple. Again, I'm going to restate it. Behind the gods of the ancient world were demons or demonic spirits. And so if, if there is a society that is worshiping and serving these demonic spirits, you would uh, see a, a demonization, if you will, to manifest in these cultures. Well, we have seen that. Those who are served and worship, and we see in other countries, but it was in the Western uh, countries as well, the phenomenon of possession, that people have been um, demonically possessed. And we're even seeing that more in our uh, world today. Uh, Beth and I have seen it in, in Mexico. I've seen it several times. Johnny and I experienced it right here where uh, we cast out a demon in between services. It was a crazy thing. Maybe I'll share it with you one day. But we're seeing that in our world today. And so what's interesting, it's not just, I believe, and we'll see through the text, it's not just an individual possession, which is true, but I also think it can possess a culture, a civilization, or a nation. In the earliest accounts of Jesus' ministry, it records that Jesus was performing miracles. So Jesus would heal the blind, and the blind would see. He would heal the lame, and the lame would walk. And we see that Jesus in his ministry cast out Demons. He performed what is described in the Greek ekabala, which means to expel or to eject or to cast out or to send away. In each case, the person was set free. They were healed. They were restored in their right mind. And before the end of Jesus' ministry on earth, he imparted some of that ekabala power of the casting out of demons to his disciples. So we see how when Jesus came, that spirit, Jesus, coming in to cast out, to get rid of, to expel, entered in, the kingdom of God entered into this world. And we see as in the first century that the disciples there are continuing this. So in the first century, the message of forgiveness and salvation and eternal life in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, went forth from Jerusalem. And the gospel spread throughout the land, and it crossed into the pagan world. So the message of God now touched the ways of the pagan world, and the Spirit of God now moved through the world of spirits and the dominion of the Shadim and the Demonios, and it was a clash of the spirits. So look at this text in Acts 16 on your screen this morning on your outline. It's quite a long text, so kind of hang in there with me. But I want to tell the story how we see this new presence coming in with the disciples and what the reaction of the people were. And it says this, now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. The girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men's, men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. 
And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful to us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitudes rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposed, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. So we see here that Paul and Silas cast out the demon out of this girl that was pestering them over and over again. Paul was annoyed, and he cast out this demon out of this girl. Well, the people were in a rage because they got profit from this gal who was fortune-telling. And what's interesting, again, in our society, if you drive to Hanford or if you drive to um, Fresno or even here in Visalia, you'll see more and more of these fortune-telling things pop up all over. Uh, just the other day, I saw three uh, on a short little drive. And so it is that same spirit behind this that was allowed to come into our nation that was not here long ago. So we're seeing again, the spirit behind these things come again. Now listen, when the spirit of God came in through Christ, the Ebola power that came in to expel these things, there was a clash. There was a clash between the demonic spirits and the spirit of God. And so we see how these people were outraged and came against the spirit of the living God. And um, so, in this text, we see that they imprison, imprison them. They beat them. And then uh, Paul let them know that they were Roman citizens, and boy, they changed their tune and apologized to him, but begged him to leave. The rage of the pagan world became so fierce at times, believers would be imprisoned, they would be crucified, they would be burned, they would be fed to the lions. And in the early years of the 4th century, the Roman emperor launched what was called the Great Persecution. And listen, it was intended to bring about the end of faith in Jesus and the termination of all Christ's followers. Christians would be commanded to offer sacrifice to pagan idols, to pagan gods, and if they didn't, they'd be thrown into prison or they would be killed for their faith. But in the end, it wasn't the gods that prevailed, but the followers of Christ. They overcame the treachery of persecution. And the message of the gospel of God's love, of God's forgiveness, overcame the reign of the gods. And we see through history, and so you can look at this through history, that we see that there was an end to the polytheism in the Western culture, uh, pantheism of the uh, uh, Greco-Roman empire that we see, and it would give way to belief in one God. And it yielded to the word of God. And so what happened, because of the uh, ekbala power of the Lord that came to expel, to get rid of, to cast away would come in, we see that the shrines and the temple of these gods became empty. Their name no longer inspired fear or awe. 
and the spell of the gods were broken, and it was what was called the twilight of the gods. Hmm. And there became a change. No longer did we celebrate these pagan holidays, but now they were Christian holidays. And so again, you can see that through, through our holidays that we celebrate, they were once pagan holidays that were redeemed, and we've changed them. And so, uh, and you can look at that through history. And so it's, it's quite interesting. So we see that the possessions, these demonic possessions, uh, dissipated. And there was a change. No longer did they sacrifice their children, but they respected the children and they raised the children in a different way. Women who were, were um, uh, compromised in so many ways were now equal in the kingdom of heaven. And they were treated as joint heirs in the kingdom of God. And so there was a change with the children. There was a change with women. There was a change in society where people once again worship the Lord. And you can see that in, in the fourth century uh, with Constantine and a big change that took place. And it influenced our world. And so, isn't it interesting, if you were to follow this, all the gods, even Paul, when Paul was there, they had many gods. And when Paul was preaching, and they had one god, because they were afraid they were going to miss gods, he was called the unknown god, just in case they missed one. And then Paul comes up and he says, let me tell you who the unknown god is. <laughs> and so when Paul was there, there was many gods. And now we see there was a... a a change. No longer were there many gods, but there was one God that the, wor the world worshipped because all those other gods were expelled because of the power of Jesus Christ. Are you with me so far? Thank you for you three who said amen. God bless you. And so there was a change in that that we see. Uh, the worship of gods came uh, to an end, and we see that, that uh, and we see this in modern times, that there's one more mystery that I want to uncover for us today that will help explain some of this, and it's found in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, and we're going to go all the way to 45, but let's just go to 44 now, and it says this, when an unclean spirit, this is Jesus te teaching now the disciples, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest, and he finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came, and when he comes, he finds it empty, say empty, swept and put in order. And then let's go through uh, 45. And then he says, then he goes and he takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. So it appears that Jesus is talking about an individual, which it does apply to an individual, and so he's talking about a possession. And so when somebody is demon-possessed, um, and he says they're cast out, when it is clean, they're cleansed, the demons are gone. But if it is empty, say empty. If it is empty, means it is not filled. It has to be filled with God. Right? With the presence of the living God in that life. If not, if it is found empty, then those other spirits will return sevenfold worse than it was in the beginning. And at first glance, it would seem that this parable is talking about a possessed person, but I believe it is far greater than that. If you look at the last sentence in 1245, he, he shows this mystery and unveils this mystery because he says, 
so shall it also be with this wicked, say with me, generation. So it's not just about a person, but he's talking here about a generation or a civilization or a nation. Listen, we're that person. We are that person, our nation, who was filled with the foundation of God's word. Do you know when I was in school, they still prayed. How many of you are old enough to remember when they prayed in school? Well, you guys are old. Yeah, anyway. How many of you, how many of you remember when the Ten Commandments were in school? How, can, how many of you remember when we were swat with a paddle in school? Woo! Wow, you guys were bad. You guys are in the right place here. God bless you. How many of you know we should bring back the paddle? Anybody behind me? Anyway. Hmm. Amen. Thank you. Hmm. How did a change take place? How did a change take place? We were talking about this the other day. I can remember as a kid, my parents let me go wherever I wanted to. And my parents were strict. <laughs> but they allowed me to play all through the neighborhood. Um, we, I lived in a city called Whittier, and it was probably... Um, driving a car about a half hour to the beach, and I can remember my parents let me ride my bike to the beach. I would never let kids do that today. Do you know why? Because there's been a change. There's been a change. The things they teach in our world today, there's been a change. How did that happen? Well, let me tell you how it happened in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they were serving God. <laughs> you shall serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Right? And so they were called to worship the Lord and worship Him only. It is said, have no other gods before me. And so as they were filled with the Lord and they served the Lord, the Lord blessed them. And there was a blessing of the Lord upon the nation of Israel when they served the Lord their God. But what happened is they started to forget the things of the Lord. They started to forget the things of the Lord. And they no longer worshipped the Lord. They no longer were attentive to his word. And the Lord gave them the law. And they didn't look at the Lord's law or the statutes or the covenants. And they got away from it. And then they start serving God's, listen, Shadim, that brought devastation. That brought craziness upon their land. Why? Listen, some people say, you know what? I, I, I don't, I don't want to be a Christian because it's, it's, uh, it's about a bunch of don'ts. Let me just say this. The Ten Commandments is a love letter to us. Because it's keeping us from devastation, from desperation, from struggles in our life. He said that for a reason, because people were fooled into worshiping other things. They were fooled in getting away from the things of God, and it brought devastation to their land and to their family. And here we are. Here we are in our world today, experiencing that devastation in our land because of the same thing that Israel went through. What was it? They turned away from God and his law, and they cleaned the house. Hmm. How did it happen in our land? Anybody know? In the 1960s, the early 1960s, they took prayer out of schools. They took God out of the classroom. Not even the kids pray, but the teachers would lead in prayer, listen, in our public schools. And you can see by history 
what took place right after, and you can see the, the um, downturn spiral in our nation from that point on. They took prayer out of schools. And listen, they didn't stop there. So here's what happened. The house, our nation, was filled with the spirit of the living God. It was found upon the principles that every time you take out currency, it says, in God we trust. It's the very foundation of our country. And there was a blessing upon God even in our Pledge of Allegiance. And so we see that all through our nation, and then it changed by taking the prayer out of schools. Because no longer did we follow under the um, theology of Marxism or communism um, those who didn't have a, our atheism, and we served the Lord our God. And if you look around now, all those things that are just mentioned has infiltrated our nation. How? One, they got prayer out of schools in the 1960s. And they didn't stop there, did they? Because they used to have, in the classroom, and they used to have in public squares, something called the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments... The very thing that Israel got rid of is what our nation got rid of in 1980. And so what was happening is our nation who was filled with God, who stood upon the foundation of the living God, who was the center of missionaries all over the world, has now changed. And so it went to the Supreme Court several times of getting the Ten Commandments out of the schools and then out of the public squares. Listen, it's illegal to post the Ten Commandments in a public square. Isn't that crazy? So here, a house that was filled with the presence of God stood upon the foundation of God in our nation, has slowly gotten, gotten away from the word of God and prayer in our public square, and that people want to know why all this devastation is happening because of the Shadim and the demonios who has infiltrated our nation. How? Because it's being cleansed. Our society and our political system has done everything it can to get rid of God and the Word of God. Boy, it got real quiet. But how many of you know that's true? And here we are. And so, next week, I'm going to show you these idols that are, exist today that are in our public squares that took the place of our Ten Commandments and took the place of prayer. And these, these demonios, these shadim, are all over our nation. And I'll show you pictures. It's shocking. It's shocking how people no longer worship the living God, but they worship these demons. And it's right out in the open. And, and I'll show you. It just, it just happened on our, was it the Emmys? Christina, was it the Emmys? The Emmys. And, and it's this craziness. Some of the things that are taking place in our world today. And so do not miss next week, okay? Let's continue. Look at Ephesians 6.12. It says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. See, a, 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 a demon or a, a demonic spirit has to have a host. You remember when Jesus was casting out the demons out of uh, the demoniac, and he's casting a demon out, and the demons say, please, there was a herd of pigs there, and he said, please cast this in the herd of pigs. How many of you heard that before? And so he casted the demons into the herd of pigs, that's where we have the first evidence of deviled ham. Um, and we see... 
Is that where that came from? <laughs> Devil Dam? Anyway. I say that for last. If I said it in the beginning, you would not got past that. <laughs> but how many of you know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, right? And Devil Dam. Anyway. And so we see in our world today, as there is a host, there is a host in our world today that we see these demonic forces behind. And so the reason why I bring this up, because it's important for you and me to know where this evil is coming from so we can address it, right? And so that's why we need to bring back the importance of prayer and God's word. Because that's the only thing that's going to turn it around. Is the spirit of the living God. That Ekbala spirit that would expel. And I believe if we don't, we're going to see it seven times worse than it was before. And we're going to see that persecution come back. And we're going to see these things come back in our world today. And it is shocking. Shocking, as I'll show you next week, of what is taking place in our nation. Hmm. And then the last verse this morning, as I run out of time in Ephesians 5.15, it says this, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Amen? Listen, out of all the times in which you could be born, of all the places in which you could be born, and all the time frame in which you would be born, you're born right here, right now. And so you and I need to live wisely, knowing what's behind all this stuff so we're not caught off guard. I get calls all the time. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Can you believe this is happening? Yes. Because I know the reason behind it. The enemy knows his time is short and he's trying to work feverishly to get as many people as he can away from God. It is nothing new. Listen, there's nothing new under the sun, right? The same thing that he did to Israel, the same God of Israel, and I'm going to talk to you about the the, the three main gods that were in Israel that are here today. And, and the purpose was to get people away from the worship of God to worship other things, to bring devastation to our land. And here we are. And there's only one thing that can turn it around. The Lord. <laughs> if God's people which are called by his name, would humble themselves. And what? Pray and seek his face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then when he hear from heaven, he'd forgive our sins and he would heal our land. Folks, we need a revival in our land. Would you agree with me? We need that spirit of the Lord upon us that would expel and cast out once again that we might get rid of the devastation that is in our land. Uh, if you're in the big city, boy, you'd see the devastation uh, and the craziness that is in our, our world. And you guys know it. But I want to challenge you, be wise. Live your life with purpose. Be wise to the signs of the time. Be wise to know that Jesus is coming back soon. Be ready. Turn yourselves and posture yourselves as you are seeking the Lord in his word and in prayer. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness and your goodness and mercy that has been upon our land and has blessed us. Because, Lord, we have followed you. And, Lord, even the people in the church... Even the people called by your name have been worshiping other things and taking even your holy day for granted. Lord, I pray that you would give us a renewed sense of your spirit in our hearts, in our lives, in our churches, 
and in our land that we might see revival. Oh God, we thank you for what you accomplish upon the cross at Calvary and that spirit that you brought to our land. That move these spirits of our land out. Lord, we need you. We need you in our hearts and in our lives and in our children and in the next generation. We need you in our country. We need you in our White House, in our legislatures, in our school boards. Oh God, we need you. But Lord, may we not look to a political solution, but may we look to a spiritual solution, which is you. Lord, help us that we might humble ourselves and pray and seek after you like we never have before, that we might see a turnaround in our nation and in our lives that would deplete the devastation that is taking place because we are seeking you. Lord, may we have no other gods before you. May there be nothing in our lives for the people in this place, O oh God, that would distract them from worshiping you. Lord, that we would come together on Sundays and Lord, we would focus upon you and may it be a time of aligning ourselves for the rest of the week that we would put you first and foremost every single day. Lord, may this be a reminder to us in this series of what's behind the devastation in our land that we might address it, that, Lord, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, oh God. Lord, give us the strength to fight the good fight of faith. Lord, help us once again to refocus our lives, our purpose upon you, the author of and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen and amen. Would you stand with me? Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, again, I want to challenge you. The enemy is going to do all he can to keep you away from this series. And, and even as I've been preparing for this series, the enemy has tried to come against me. I got stories that would... It, freaky stuff because he doesn't want this to go forth because we're exposing what's behind all this and how many of you know when you expose it you take away the power of it because the power of the living God is more powerful than anything you and I will come against and that's why we don't fear anything but fear the Lord our God and him alone only amen don't be in a hurry to leave give me time to go out and to greet you but we're going to sing a song, and I want you to take this time just to focus in the next just two, three minutes, just to focus upon the Lord and everything that we talked about. And would you do this with me, that as you're worshiping the song, that you would just ask the Lord to forgive you for the times that you've neglected Him and to reestablish the foundation of God in our lives and in this place. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you.